an inequality is a relation in which one expression is greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to some other expression. A value of a variable for which the inequality is true is a solution of the inequality. The two inequalities are equivalent, meaning equal to one another, when they have the same solution set. Okay. Before we get started, there's this special note. When you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you must flip the inequality symbol. It's going to change directions. Okay, so we're going to keep this in mind, and I'll, I'll make reference to it when we get there. Solve the inequality, write the answer in set notation and interval notation. We also want to see the graph of it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is solve this for x. We want to get x by itself, so we subtract 8. And divide both sides by 2, and we get x is less than or equal to 4. Now recall previously, if it has this equal to bar, that means it's going to be a bracket. Um, so let's do set notation first. Set notation, all the values for x such that, that's a straight bar, x is less than or equal to 4. And mathematically this is read all the values of x such that x is less than or equal to 4. On our number line, we're going to put a 4. Since we have the equal to bar, it's going to be a bracket. And since the variable is on the left, we can shade the way the arrow points, describing less than. Interval notation is very important and very specific that you name it left to right. So as I start reading across my paper left to right, the first thing that I come to is an arrow pointing to the left, which means negative infinity. And I continue on until I get to 4 with a bracket. And so that's going to be interval notation. We have set notation, we have our graph, and interval notation is very specific that it describes the graph as you read it left to right. All right, let's solve number two. We want to get all the variables on the same side. So we'll move. Get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Divide both sides by negative 6. When you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you must remember to flip this sign. So you're going to get x, I need to flip that, and then I have negative 5, 6 there. Set notation will be all the values of x such that x is less than or equal to negative 5, 6. On our graph, I'm just going to represent negative 5, 6 once again because it has the bar. It's going to be a bracket and it's less than. So interval notation. As I read left to right, the first thing I come to, it's similar. So it's going to be negative infinity to negative 5, 6 with a bracket. The interval uh, negative infinity 5, when there's a parenthesis, it represents an open interval because the 5 is not included as part of an interval. If it's a bracket, it's a closed interval. And it means both of the endpoints are included in the graph. Um, so the square brackets means it's part of the graph. A parenthesis means it's an open interval and it's not part. Okay, this is a compound inequality. Uh, and we want to solve this in parts. So we want to, first of all, when I'm trying to figure out how to deal with this thing, the easiest thing to do is if I cover up this side and ignore it and I ask you to solve this and said, how would you get x by itself? And you would tell me, um, add 8 to both sides. The only thing different is we have a third side over there, so I'm going to add 8 to all sides. So then that gives me 9. It's less than or equal to 6x 
less than or equal to 12. Once again, if I ignored this part and I say, how would you solve this? You would tell me, well, divide both sides by 6. And we're going to do likewise other than we're going to acknowledge that we have a third side over here. So 9, 6 reduces to 3 halves. We get x. So if I was to rewrite these, um, set notation would be all the values of x such that um, 3 halves is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. Okay, it means I'm going to have, this is approximately 1.5. You can put it in your calculator if you're not sure. So that means 3 halves would be over here and 2 would be over here. Okay, now I prefer to write these out and separate them. So I have x is less than or equal to 2. And I also have, I'm going to move this box out the way, x is greater than or equal to 3 halves. And I like to write it in that direction. So x, mouth is open to the x, mouth is open to the x, x is greater than or equal to 3 halves. So make sure you don't um, change the value of it when you rewrite it. Okay, so then when I'm graphing x is less than or equal to 2, it's going to be a bracket because of the bar, and it's less than 2. So bracket for the bar, less than 2. And then when I'm graphing this one, it's going to be a bracket at 3 halves greater than. Now recall your lessons on compound inequalities and 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 or. And tells us when we have this graph down here, we must include only the answer that overlaps. Okay, the solution to an and problem says, well, where do these two overlap? And they overlap from here to here. That's where the two colors overlap. So interval notation is going to be from 3 over 2 bracket 2. All right, number four, we don't like that we have all those fractions. So the first thing we're going to do is multiply by a common denominator of a six. So every term in the problem, we're going to multiply by six. And then you've reduced by the bottom number. Since this the bottom number is three, I'm going to say divide by three, divide by three. Whatever the remaining number is, multiply it times the numerator. So I'm going to say two times this negative 2 that's already there and get negative 4x. Then I start over with the next term. Always divide by the denominator. So divide by 6, divide by 6, multiply what's left. So I have 1 times this negative 1 that's already there. So I have a negative 1 and of course keep the x. And then I start over. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So I have a 2. I have 2 times this 2, which is going to be 4, and then I have this that's still sitting there that I carry down. Divide by the bottom number. We start over, so 3 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2 times the 4 that's already there. 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, now we're going to just simplify this thing. Bring this down. Distribute. That becomes 4x plus 4, add all your like terms, so negative 4x minus 1x is negative 5, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1x. Get x by itself, so subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 1x is less than or equal to 4, divide both sides by negative 1. Recall, if you divide both sides by negative, we have a rule that says you have to flip that sign, so x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Set notation, I'm going to come out here, would be all the values of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Negative 4. We put negative 4 on the number line. It's a bracket because of this bar, greater than. 
and then we name interval notation left to right. So as I'm coming across, the first thing I come to is a bracket negative 4, and the last thing I come to is an arrow pointing to the right, which is an infinity.